<laughs> oh, that was fun, huh? <laughs> so today we're going to be looking at this idea of what it means to actually be creative. It's one of our core principles that, that we are creative beings made in the image and likeness. There is only one power, one presence. So if that power and that presence is a creative power, then guess what? So are we. We are a creative power. And I think we forget that a lot, actually. I think we forget just how powerful we are in our own experience and also in how we are impacting each other and the world. And so yesterday, um, I spent the afternoon, my wife and I spent the afternoon with our godchild. It was her ninth birthday. And Chris and I were both dressed up as the queendom, the, 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 the dragon queens of Wings of Fire. And it's a big deal with that age group, right? The Wings of Fire. And so there was a whole treasure hunt with all the different kingdoms. And I was in charge of the kingdom of the sea. And Chris was in charge of the kingdom of the sand. And we had a great time. And and in the midst of all of this, after we have finished the treasure hunt and there's snacks and the kids are crazy, right? 15 nine-year-old girls and one boy running around like lunatics, um, screaming at the top of their lungs. Um, JD and Ken have this swing, right, on their, on their deck. And you look at that, and you think, well, OK, there's this swing, right? And so how you might get into that swing is sort of how you see Roma in here right now, right? She's sitting, and she's swinging, right? And then she might get a little bit more creative, right? Doing a, a little bit something more, right? And then this is what we're being invited into. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So where are you, where are you creating from? Are you creating from the place where you already know exactly what it is that you want? You already know exactly what it is that it's going to look like. You already have figured out what the answer is. Can anybody in here relate to this? We get stuck. We get stuck in the old narrative. And we think that we know. But honestly, we don't really know anything, do we? I mean, that's the point of the, this journey is that we're discovering all the time that life is this magnificent mystery. And it's constantly surprising me. Is it surprising you too? So can we embrace that? Can we make that part of how we understand how we show up in the world? So that maybe when we see a swing sitting there, that maybe the way we sit into it is like this. Right? Or like that. Or like that. Yeah, this is Joshua, the, the, younger, the younger son. Now, the thing that I know gets in the way of my being willing to embrace the unknown is fear, right? And particularly on that swing, it would be fear of hurting my body temple. Right? Like watching what the kids were doing on that thing, right? The fear of, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. That's not, that's not part of what I'm capable of. Is that really true? I and mean, I just really want us to sit with that 
We make all these decisions based on our age, based on our experiences, based on who we're in relationship with, who our community is, and, and we think that that's it, that we're set. And it's fear that holds us back from exploring what else is possible. How free could I have felt on that swing if I had been able to get the kids off of it, number one, to be able to get on it and play on it? So in unity, we understand that fear, the flip side of fear is faith, right? The flip side of fear is faith. If we have faith in that creator presence, that is alive as my life, then I truly do have nothing to fear. The scripture, whom shall I fear? I will fear nothing. I will fear nothing. So in unity, we understand fear as false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. I think that that is going to be the way it's going to happen. But is that actually true? It is my fear deciding something for me. So Steve Jobs. So now we're sort of getting a sense of creativity. But the part that I want to invite us into is innovation. And Steve Jobs describes it this way. He says, innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity, not a threat. Everyone breathe with me on that. Because when change happens, we almost immediately see it as something that is threatening the things that we already know, the way of life that we may have already become adapted to the things that we hold near and dear. And so that, that can we see change not as something to fear, but truly as an opportunity for something new to be able to arise. And I'm not going to lie to you, this takes practice, right? It takes practice to be able to, to see something happening and to be able to say to yourself, this is an opportunity. This really is not fun right now. I am really uncomfortable right now. But this is an opportunity for me to grow and to evolve and to be something larger than I am. And if it's true for me personally, it's also true for us as a collective. That as a collective, when we are willing to see change as an opportunity rather than a threat, this is how we change the world. This is how we are able to step into something completely new. This is how we're able to take the, the ideas and the energy of the young folks all around us and bring that into our life, not dismissing it and saying, oh, we already know all that. You'll figure it out soon enough. You'll get to where I am eventually. Would we really want that for the next generation? Would we really want them to get to where we are eventually? I don't. I want the next generation to shoot past me. I want them to be greater than I am not the same as me, but it means that I have to be willing to really listen and be present and navigate whatever's coming up for me. So, so Ken and I, we're watching the kids playing on this thing, right? And, and, and they're putting themselves, they're cocooning themselves in it. And then other kids are just whipping them around while they're cocooned and spinning them in circles. And they're sort of flying all around the deck. And they're figuring out. They're taking turns and everything. And, and I'm sitting next to Ken. And I said, I, this is looking a little, <laughs> a little something. And he looked at me and he said, eh, somebody will get hurt and they'll stop. <laughs> and 
I thought, yeah, right? Isn't that, isn't that how we learn? Right? We, we, if we had tried to stop them from playing on that swing, it would have been an uproar. So what eventually did happen? Somebody got hurt, right? So the, one of the girls got into the thing, but she didn't cocoon herself completely. And then the kids started pushing her around, and there was another little girl. She took it, she took it like a stunt woman, I gotta tell ya. She took two, two feet right in her chest, just poof, and knocked her right over. And so the adults step in and say, we're done, we're done with innovation, right? The way these kids were innovating, we're done with innovation. We tie the swing up into a big knot, right? And, and there's no argument from the kids, because they, they, they see, right? They see something. And then the little girl who took it like a stunt woman finishes crying and walks over to that knotted thing and starts trying to undo it. <laughs> now, what if we all did that? Because all too often, when we get knocked over or we, we're hurt, we don't re-engage. We check out, we go, we go away. Oh, no, no, no. As soon as she got herself together, she went back over there and she's trying to undo it. And all the adults are like, no, 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 no. We're, we're not doing that anymore. It's staying knotted. So what did the kids start doing? They started swinging on it, knotted. <laughs> they just kept innovating. They just kept coming at it again and again and again. What if that was the energy that we brought into our own life? I think what happens is we get to, none of those kids cared about what they looked like. None of those kids cared that when they got dumped out of the cocoon, most of them couldn't walk because they were so dizzy and they're like crawling across the deck. They didn't care. It was about the experience of what they were involved in, and they were having so much fun. It was so infectious. It was so joyous. So they weren't in a headspace deciding something. They were in this intuitive awareness and just playing. They were bringing joy to something. And if the fear did come up, they didn't let it decide for them what they were going to do or what they were not going to do. Innovation is seeing what everybody has seen and thinking what nobody has thought. Looking at the things that seem so familiar, that seem so ordinary, and being able to take a hammock and tie it in a knot and turn that into a completely different game where what they were doing was spinning around with like their knees up because like they were so close to the ground and just spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning, and spinning until they wanted to throw up, right? Fun! But they were, you know, the adults are thinking, we tied it up, the swing is over. Mm -mm. Right? They were able to look at something and see it anew. See it not as a shutting down, but as an opportunity. An opportunity for a different way to continue to be in the world. To be the joy, to be the light, to be the love. So Ernest Holmes says this, which I think is really interesting. Developing confidence in ourselves, because that's what these kids had, right? They were so confident that they could just have fun. Developing confidence in ourselves requires that we must have confidence in that something which is greater than we are. Then we will have spiritual self-reliance. And when this is done, the lesser must always submit to the greater. Weakness will give way to strength. Despair will turn to hope. Hate will become love. Failure will become success. And sickness will transform into health. 
Can we feel that space within us that is spiritually self-reliant? That it doesn't need circumstances and situations to make it okay? That no matter what is happening, we are okay. We're better than okay. We get hit in the chest by flying feet, and we get dumped on the ground, and we're crying, and we get back up again, and we go right back into the thing to make it ours in some way. So how do we activate our intuition? How do we activate our spiritual self-reliance? How do we bring that peace online for ourselves in a way. Because I think all too often we have been taught to take our creative, intuitive urges and channel all of that through our ego. And we allow our ego to decide, yes, no, maybe, I'm not so sure. Those kids were not filtering in any way, shape, or form. And the innovation and creativity that they came up with was just mind-boggling. And, and they were engaged in that for like an over an hour, right? Like it was just something that kept them engaged. So I want to introduce the life visioning process. I have shared this with people before. I'm doing a workshop today, so if you want to stick around at noon, I'm going to be doing a more in-depth dive into this. But this process, developed by Michael Beckwith at Agape, is really designed to ask the bigger question. The bigger question, not, not what we think the answer is. Can you feel the difference? But to ask the questions. And so the first question is, what is the divine vision of my life? Not my human vision, but my, the divine vision for my life. Can we bring our spiritual self-reliance into this conversation? And then we get to ask ourselves, as we begin to catch something, the edges of something, again, our mind wants to tell us what it is. Right? And I think I've shared this. When I, I, did a, I did a visioning process at Agape, and I saw um, a, 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 a woman who I knew, um, giving, she was giving me a script, right? And I was like, oh, she's meant to be my agent. You know, we come up with like the answer to it. And I connected with her and she did actually become my agent, but that wasn't why she and I needed to connect. She and I then built an, 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 a, a youth conservatory program, arts conservatory program at Agape. And we ran that for four years. That was, what, that was what we were there to connect with. The script wasn't about me getting a role in a TV show. The script was about what we were going to be creating with these kids so that they could become these fabulous artistic folks. And it, took, it wasn't until after that I kind of saw it. So we always want to try to avoid letting the mind decide what, they think, what, what we think it is. And it's always about staying in the question. So even as we get the texture of what this vision might be, we then have to ask ourselves three very practical questions. And that's why I love this process. Because the practical questions are, what must I become to manifest this vision? Because if I was already it, it would already be manifested, right? So what do I need to become? What do I need to discover? What do I need to embrace? What do I need to welcome into my world in a way that I haven't done till now? And what do I need to release to manifest this vision? What is it that I'm holding on to that is preventing this vision from actually coming into being? And the third one is what talents and gifts do I already have that I am not fully activating? So can you feel how practical these three things are? What do I want to become? What do I need to let go of? And what do I already have? 
And that gives us the thing for our mind to focus on. That gives us something for our ego to say, oh, okay, now I know what I need to, quote, unquote, do. I need to release these things. I need to stand in my capacity to be more organized. I need to become someone who trusts their vision of what my home could look like if I did a new interior design for it. Right? Can you feel what, I'm in, what you're being invited into? So, the vision as you catch it, the way I describe it, and I have shared, it, you might, if you've taken the class, you've seen these, this, these slides before, but it really encapsulates it. So you do a visioning, and you catch like one piece of a mosaic. You get one little piece of it, this like, this blue piece maybe, or the orange piece. We want to decide what we think it is. Can we actually tell what that is? We can't really tell what it is, but we want to. We have to resist that. We have to stay open, open to the vision. What is it? What could it be? And then we keep visioning. And we start to get a couple more pieces of the vision. Can we still tell what it is? Not yet, right? And then we keep visioning. And we get a few more pieces. Oh, now something's starting to take shape. I can start to see that there's something there that's recognizable. Do we still know what it is? Starting to maybe, and we keep visioning. It didn't like that. There we go. And then we begin to see a bigger picture. So this process is exactly that, a process. It's not a one and done, which I know we all love, but it is a process that you're invited into again and again. What is the divine idea of my life? What am I being invited to be? What am I being invited to release? And what do I already have? If you do this process every morning as part of your morning practice, I guarantee you that your life will be transformed. Guarantee that your life will be transformed. What is the divine idea? What do I need to become? What do I need to release? And what do I already have? So what it allows is for space. Because most of us really lock ourselves in, right? We put ourselves in little boxes. This is how much I can do. This is how much I can afford. This is how much... <sighs> Spaciousness is where transformation can actually happen. And the thing is, is that we don't make it happen. We make it welcome. We create a place within ourselves where the divinity that we are already can fully express itself. So it's not like we're chasing something out there. Anybody in here feel as if your dreams or your visions for your life are like over there? They're not. There's nothing over there, right? There's nothing over there. Everything is right here. So this is a process, a really powerful process, that will actually make it welcome to you. Actually allow you to be it, not chase it. Anybody in here tired of chasing? I'm tired of chasing, all right? Holding on is believing there is only the past. Letting go is believing in the future. And that is my invitation to all of us. Can we believe in the future? Are we willing to let go in thinking that the past is everything? Can we believe in possibility, in potential, in something radically new, radically different, showing up in our life and in all of our relationships? 
wouldn't that be fun if we didn't already know? Wouldn't it be fun to be surprised? This is what I'm inviting us into. If you can't physically do this, I want you to just embrace the energy of it. <laughs> hey, just embrace the energy of it, right? The next thing she's going to start doing is spinning on her head, right? So, so just trusting in that there is more than you have ever imagined available to you. Stop selling yourself short. Stop selling yourself and this world short. Because I know that I personally need every single gift and talent and unique expression that you have on this planet. I know it will make my world a better place. Can we say yes to showing up for each other? so that we can be this joyful and this experimental and this innovative. And it asks us to let it go. Let it go. Vision, passion, inspiration, intuition. This is your God self. Can you feel that? This is your God self. This is who we have come here to be. We have all come here to be this. So I have this one last quote, which I loved. Um, God speaks to each of us as God makes us, then walks with us silently out of the night. These are the words we dimly hear. You, sent out beyond your recall, go to the limits of your longing. Embody me. Flare up like a flame and make big shadows, I can move it. Shall we make some big shadows? Can we flare up like a flame? Because that is who we have all come here to be. So let's take this into our time of meditation. And we'll do a really quick version of the visioning process. So just inviting you to take a breath. And I know it's hard to do. We say like empty the mind. What I'm gonna invite you into is what if you actually just center in your heart? Letting your mind take a little bit of a break. It'll have lots to do later, I promise. And just centering in our heart space. And just opening into the divine potential that is the very truth of our beingness. It's who we truly are. So you don't have to really become anything. You are being invited to reveal something about yourself. So as we touch this heart space, we just invite this question, what's the God idea? What's the divine vision? What's, the, what's the, the love idea? Any of these words, whatever works for you. For my life. Bigger, bigger. What's the biggest idea of my life? I'm just open to smells or colors, maybe it's a feeling tone that you get, a sense of being that makes itself known. And we just continue to breathe into the question. Allowing whatever is arising to arise. We don't have to figure it out. Nothing to figure out. We're allowing the mystery to inform. We are welcoming the mystery. 
What does the divine idea of your life feel like, taste like? Maybe a word or a phrase or a color or a sound. We invite the question, what am I being invited to become so that this Whatever you're catching, no matter how ephemeral it feels, how can this become more present in my life? What do I need to become? What do I need to allow? What, what am I being invited to reveal so that this divine idea can be revealed? What do I need to let go of? What am I being invited to release? What no longer serves? Maybe it did until this point in time. But right now, what do I need to release in this moment? And the last question is, what do I already have? Who do I already know myself to be? What skills, what abilities, what practices, what beingness can we bring right now so that this divine idea continues to inform and develop and reveal itself in ways that we can understand? What am I invited to reveal? What am I invited to release? And what do I know I already have? And just welcome that idea, the divine idea again, just knowing it's going to continue to inform past this moment, speaking in ways that you are able to access and understand. And the invitation right now is to just be willing, be willing, be willing to become, be willing to release, be willing to stand in the fullness of who you truly are. And it is in that willingness that I know a way is made. I know the largest vision of our individual lives and our collective understanding is being made manifest right now. Oh, how good that is and how grateful I am. And in agreement, we say, and so it is. Amen. Ashay.